With so many options to choose from, how do we decide what stays on the aisle and what comes home with us? From the foods that we buy while out and about to the dishes we prepare while back at home, we're constantly faced with a decision about nutrition. Studies continue to show that the quantity and quality of what we consume is directly linked to our health and function of our minds and bodies. So how do we incorporate proper nutritional tips into our lives? Today we'll be talking about some of these tips, discover a story about someone who thought he had it all, and learn more delicious recipes from the New Start Kitchen. All this and more on today's episode of New Start Now. Ever since I first saw a tractor, I've been amazed by the power and the efficiency of these machines. While a tractor such as this one has the potential to perform a variety of useful tasks, it would break down and be rendered useless without the right type of fuel. Just like a tractor, our bodies need the proper fuel in order to keep running and to function at its fullest potential. I'm your host, Jonathan Hunter, and on today's episode, we'll be talking about nutrition one of the eight components of a New Start lifestyle. First, we'll hear from someone who discovered for themselves the vital role that nutrition plays in a balanced life. Our mission here is a free daycare for the working poor. And we have about 50 children under the age of five in, a day, in the free daycare. And we serve the communities around here while the working people from that work in the fields uh, bring their kids here so that they have a safe place to be while they're working because otherwise they're left alone at home and they either drug them so they sleep all day while they're going to work or they tie them up on a chair so they don't burn the house down while they're going to work. Well, for about four years, four or five years before New Start, I got sick with fibromyalgia and it got worse, it progressively got worse. I wasn't involved with much of the function here because I couldn't, I'd come out for a little bit and then I'd have to go in the house. I, I seen the pain that she was in every day uh, from the fibromyalgia, as well as the, the seizures she was having many a day, even though she was taking medication that still didn't stop them. The year before New Start was when it was really bad. I could barely walk without being exhausted. So I would get to <clears throat> my bed to the bathroom and that would be totally exhausting and then I'd sleep for two or three hours. She wasn't able to do very much at all for a long time. Sometimes it wasn't easy, but we still had to continue to go and grow and do what needed to be done here. I felt like a burden to everyone. Not able to take care of my kids. Wasn't able to take care of my husband. That lasted pretty close, maybe even more than a year. I woke up in the middle of the night about two o'clock in the morning and I was in pain, so. And I was, at that point I was in depression. And so I told the Lord to take me home or heal me, do something, because I can't do this anymore. And to give me a sign. And so the next morning I got up and I got a phone call from these doctors and they, they asked if we'd be around. So we said, yeah. So they came down and they sat down with us and they told us about Weimar, about New Start. And so he asked us if we would be interested in going there, That. He, they believe that that could be 
something that would be useful for us and, and maybe help me with my, my illness. This is a great opportunity to, to just watch and see how God's going to deal with this one. And he came through, of course. And I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to be healed because that was an answer from the night before. My experience in New Start was amazing. The staff there were just, they were great. And after three days of being there, I had already lost uh, 15 pounds, I think, after three days, uh, the first week when they weighed us. And four days in, I'd gotten off all my medication. I had no more pains, I had no more seizures. And so, I could already see that God was healing me. Since I got back, I've been, I've been able to go hiking with the kids. I went hiking up on the hills back there. I played volleyball with them. We follow, we follow what we learned. We, we stay away from the snacking. We go to bed early, we, we, we rise early. And then, the, like, they, like they say, the nutrition, the exercise, the water. I'm outside every day. When I came home, I told everybody at New Start also, I told them before I left that we had two mountains up my, in our backyard that I wanted to climb to hike with the kids. And, and I told them that the smaller one I'd be doing at the end of July and then the bigger one I'd do it by the end of the year. But I did them both by the end of July. <laughs> so, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Before New Start, I cooked everything in grease and oil. Um, we ate a lot of red meats, hamburgers, um, lots of pasta, lots of pasta with hamburger, fatty foods, french fries, uh, fried chicken, potatoes, fried eggs, fried everything, bacon. And I would drink at least four cups of coffee a day. I would drink a lot of sugar, juices, soda, and so we weren't eating very healthy. And we'd eat whenever. We didn't have a scheduled time to eat. We would just, you know, sometimes we'd eat three meals a day, sometimes two meals a day. So, and, but we'd never ate properly. Before I left New Start, I called my staff and I told them to go clean out my house. I wanted all the food that was in there out because we were gonna start fresh and I didn't want to come home and see any temptation. And so they did, they took everything, even the good stuff that I was able to eat, they took. So they cleaned everything out. So I went shopping, I had all new, a new start, new, and stuck to it. I'm still sticking to it, still no eating, we're no, still not eating any uh, meat products, no, no beef, no steak, no nothing, no red meats. I don't miss the old way. I, I enjoy the, the new foods. I, I enjoy the, uh, the vegetable soups that, that are made. I, I, I don't miss hamburger, I don't miss steak. And, and uh, I, I just welcome this, this new lifestyle change altogether. It, it's, uh, it's made a difference in all of us. And, and uh, it's been a blessing for all of us. What you eat is killing you and New Start can, can teach you a, a new way of, of eating and a new, a new way of taking care of yourself and, and to change your, your bad habits and, and make them better and help you to be healthier and live a more active lifestyle and longer life. Unbelievable how simple changes can have such an impact. What's also unbelievable is the complexity of food and the hidden health principles found in something as simple as a basil leaf. Up next, we'll hear from our health professionals about the direct correlation between nutrition and our health.
Oh, you want me to do this thing? Yeah, yeah, go for it. You're serious. Yeah. <laughs> Take one. Nutrition is the fuel that helps our bodies to be healthy. Because it's the foundation on which our health is built. How we function day to day in our thought process is greatly affected by what we eat. Our brain chemistry, those neurotransmitters, are made out of nutrients. Uh, they have to do with what we're eating and what we're putting into our body. Nutrients means um, vitamins, minerals, fiber, antioxidants, phytonutrients. And so even our ability to think rationally and to be able to have a positive attitude can be related to nutrition. If you're not eating the right foods, your body cannot make the right products. You, you've heard the term, you are what you eat. So every single thing in your body is dependent upon good nutrition. You cannot outrun a bad diet. We have so much uh, junk food, ultra-processed foods, that's uh, actually killing us. The majority of diseases, be it um, high blood pressure, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and some types of cancer are related to what you eat. And it's pretty clear, and, and I think a growing body of evidence is supporting the idea that a plant-based diet really has a significantly positive impact on all of these diseases. Heart, again, heart disease, supervascular disease, kidney disease. We want to get healthy at as early an age as possible because the earlier we get healthy and have good habits, the longer they last. If you're consuming a standard American diet, you're eating a lot of processed foods, you're eating a lot of red meats, you're, you're not eating a lot of fiber, you're not getting a lot of fruits and vegetables and grains, legumes especially, you're not getting any of those things. So probably the first step to eat healthy is to move from a diet containing animal products to a diet that is plant-based. Most important thing is increase the fiber in your diet. Where is fiber found? It's only found in the plant kingdom. So if you're increasing your fiber, you're by nature decreasing animal products. There's no fiber in animal products. Uh, a heavy processed, heavy meat-based diet are those things that really correlate quite strongly with whether you're talking about colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. If you can, can minimize your taking of processed foods and or meats, all of these other diseases are going to be diminished to one degree or another. And there's a couple of suggestions that I would give to everybody. High in antioxidants and actually low in arachidonic acid and oxidized cholesterol. Arachidonic acid is a pro-inflammatory mediator. It's going to mess with our immune system. It's going to actually even mess with how we feel because when our brain is inflamed, we're going to feel bad. And so arachidonic acid is present in meat, it's present in eggs, it's present in fish, it's not present in any plant foods, and it's not even present in dairy. And interestingly, oxidized cholesterol is only found in animal foods as well. And oxidized cholesterol is what actually damages our endothelium. These are the cells that line our circulation. And then we can get plaques building up, and then we can get blood clots and those sorts of things, and it can impair our circulation to vital aspects of even our skeletal system, our intestinal system, our brain, our heart, those sorts of things. A lot of information out there coming out from really cutting edge athletes that they actually perform, their bodies recover quicker, their muscles recover much faster when they follow a plant-based diet. Wholesome food, real food, that's the place to start. These days, families eat out a lot or get takeout or uh, convenience foods from the grocery store. Uh, they don't eat together. I would um, encourage you to just make food, sit together as a family, and enjoy your time together. That, that's part of good health as well. Have the family be involved in changing your diet. Get them involved have them come and make some of the recipes with you. Make it enjoyable. When you have to throw something out because it's just, whoa, didn't work out, laugh about it, have fun with it, and set another goal for each other and involve one another. In regards to healthy breakfasts, I'm, I'm still more of a traditionalist when it comes to breakfast. So grains and fruits and nuts, that's a great way to start breakfast. What I tell people, you need to focus on your culture. 
If in your culture, there's certain dish that, that, that you're used to eating, transform that dish into uh, a palatable, healthy version of it. And it's actually best uh, being in the gastroenterology world. It's actually best if we do not mix fruits and vegetables at the same meal, if we're prone to reflux. So I typically will eat fruits for breakfast and vegetables in the second meal, salad and vegetables. Because it's probably healthiest to eat breakfast like a king, we say, and lunch like a prince, and if you have supper at all, like a pauper. And that's not the way most Americans eat, but that's probably the best way. Hi there, I'm Dr. Gallant. Did you know a tomato has four chambers and is red? Your heart has four chambers and is red. Tomatoes contain lycopene, which is a powerful antioxidant that combats free radicals which are harmful to our bodies. Tomatoes are a good food for your heart and your blood. Now we've learned some ways to improve our nutrition, but how do we convert these nutritional facts to food that actually tastes good? Let's head over to the New Star Kitchen to see what our friends have for us today. Welcome to the New Star Kitchen. My name is Charlene Cute. Today we're going to show you how to make handmade bread. Now this is a really great thing to do. It's great therapy. So the first thing we're gonna do is get stuck in with the flour. We have three cups of whole wheat flour, a quarter cup of applesauce, a cup of water, five tablespoons of gluten flour, a tablespoon of yeast, one and a half teaspoons of salt, four teaspoons of maple syrup, and a quarter cup of water. So, we're going to condition the flour first. So we're gonna do this thing in stages. So first we're going to add the applesauce and the water to the flour. And then we're going to form that into a dough. And once it's formed into a dough, we're going to let that rest and sit covered for an hour. And then we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, so I like to use a fork to start off with. And then you need to get stuck in with your hands. So initially it's a bit sticky. So bring it together in your bowl just for a bit. And when it starts to get a bit stiff, that's when you need to get your hands involved. And I think that's about now. Okay, so we'll put that to the side. And you're just bringing it together, going around the bowl, bringing it together. It may seem a little dry at first, but the moisture is in there and we're just locking it into the flour right now. So keep turning and you want to try and get all of the flour off the side of the bowl. Whenever I was working or being taught how to use things in flour by my grandma or my mum, they said a good dough is when the bowl comes away clean. So we're going to keep going till we incorporate everything into this dough and hopefully we'll get a clean bowl at the end. Good workout for your arms too. I think we're almost there. And I think we did a pretty good job of cleaning that bowl. And it's all brought together now. So you can just go ahead and leave that. This is how it should look. Go ahead and leave that in the bowl and cover it with a clean tea towel. And we're going to let that sit for an hour and then we'll be back. Welcome back to the New Start Kitchen. We've let our dough rest and now we're going to finish incorporating the rest of our ingredients. So we are going to put in the gluten flour. 
the yeast, the salt, the maple syrup, there we go, and the water. And now we're going to get stuck in again and we're going to mix all of this in until it's incorporated. So you can keep turning your bowl round as well as you keep kneading the mixture together. Doing this is better than using a stress ball. Might feel a bit wet at first keep going. That conditioned dough will slowly absorb all of the moisture and the added ingredients we just put in. Once it's all kind of come together, you're going to transfer this mixture to a smooth surface and then we're going to knead it for 10 minutes minutes. So I think we're basically incorporated. We can move this bowl to one side and on our clean smooth surface just slowly fold the dough over on itself and using the heel of your hand push your dough and keep turning it and you're going to keep doing this for 10 minutes until it's smooth. Once it's smooth, we're going to transfer it back to our bowl and we're going to let it rest for another 10 minutes. And then we'll come back. After your bread has had time to sit for 10 minutes, then you can uncover it and we're going to form it into our loaf. So take it out of your bowl and set your bowl to one side. Now, if you spread your dough out like this, and then take one side and fold it up here. Take the other side, fold it over the top. And then if you roll it over and just tuck each side under like this. Then you take some spray oil, just lightly spray your pan. And then you're going to set your loaf inside here, just like that. And then you cover it again and you let that rise for another 30 minutes to an hour. Ideally, you just want it to be doubled in size. So when it's doubled in size, then we'll be back to put it in the oven. So as you can see, our bread has doubled in size. It's filled the pan. And we're now going to put it in the oven to bake for 45 minutes at 325 degrees. And then we'll take it out and we'll show you what it looks like. So I've taken my bread out of the oven and you want to cook your bread until you hear a hollow sound. And I've allowed it to cool for a little bit. And there you have it. You've put a lot of hard effort into making this and we're going to cut into this now and see there's nothing like the smell of freshly made bread in your house. And there's nothing like eating it as well. So there you go. Fresh, handmade bread with no extra added ingredients. Welcome back. They say the way to the heart is through the stomach, but what about the mind? I find myself thinking about food a lot, but is it possible that what we eat can impact how we think? Up next, Dr. Neil Nedley will share more about nutrition and about the gut-brain connection. So with us today, we have Dr. Neil Nedley, who is the president of the Weimar Institute. In addition to being the founder and director of the Nedley Depression and Anxiety Recovery Program. He also runs a small outpatient clinic here on the Weimar campus in addition to serving as a hospitalist. 
in the local Auburn community. And as I understand, you're also an accomplished pilot, is that right? I enjoy that very much. That's wonderful. <laughs> and we're very grateful to have him with us today. He's often busy traveling around, uh, giving presentations at various different institutions. Um, so we're thankful to have you with us today and that you're able to carve some time out of your schedule for Thank us. you very much, Matthew. So something we've been learning about in this episode is nutrition's effect on our body and obviously its profound effect on our physical health. Um, but as a gastroenterologist, we're hoping that maybe you could define the term gut-brain connection in maybe a, a brief kind of everyday definition. Is that something you probably deal with frequently? Well, yes, in my field of gastroenterology, of course, I learned about serotonin and I learned about dopamine and mm -hmm. I learned about all of these different neurotransmitters that are actually used in the brain, but they're produced in the gut. Even melatonin at night under mm -hmm. periods of fasting has produced a large amount in the gut itself, even sometimes more than what the brain produces. Hmm. And so uh, when I started learning brain chemistry and becoming more specialized in the mental health arena, it was basically a review of all of the GI neuroendocrine system. Hmm. And there's quite a few nervous cells in the GI tract that are responding and actually producing these neurotransmitters. If we have a very healthy gut, we're likely to have a very healthy brain as well. Wow. So it's really uh, quite similar, and there's a lot of a relation between, you're saying, the structure in the gut as well as in the brain. But how might uh, what we eat be in turn affecting our thoughts and affecting our mental health? Well, it has quite an impact. Now, there is a few differences that are important to recognize. In the GI tract, there's no blood-brain barrier. Hmm. And, but in the brain, there, the arteries become like steel pipes. Hmm. And that's so that we don't get toxins in there to cause um, the toxicity that occurs in the brain is permanent and when those nervous cells die. And so only small molecules can get across. Hmm. And uh, so, for instance, uh, glutathione that can you know, come into the gut, uh, you, can't, you don't get glutathione into the brain. You have to get the substrates to make those individually. So you have to get cysteine to come in. Mm -hmm. Those individual amino acids will come through into the brain, and then we actually have to produce the glutathione. Same with serotonin. We might have plenty of serotonin in our gut, but we need the, the tryptophan mm -hmm. uh, in the brain itself, and we need to have it carried across that blood-brain barrier in order for us to be able to make serotonin. Mm -hmm. So the serotonin in the bloodstream does not have a lot to do with the serotonin that you're able to make in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so that makes nutrition even more important. We need those substrates to be able to make serotonin. We need a diet that has tryptophan in it. We need a diet mm -hmm. that has carbs because it takes an insulin-mediated mechanism to get tryptophan. It's a large molecule. It's not gonna diffuse across the blood-brain barrier without carriers. Mm -hmm. And so it requires insulin, actually, to help it to get into that GI tract, and that's why low-carb diets are not good for mm -hmm. the brain because we're not gonna be able to have enough tryptophan to be able to make adequate serotonin if we're on a low-carb diet for a long time. Wow. So what you're eating really has a profound effect on what's available for your brain to use. Exactly. And if you're not eating the appropriate things, then your brain's not going to really have what it needs to be healthy and to be happy. Exactly. So what about the reverse of that? Let's say if somebody is depressed or anxious and they're on a good diet or relatively good diet, can these thoughts or, or having certain other uh, mental um, kind of uh, things that are troubling them be affecting their digestion in a, in a negative way? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it can have a very profound effect on the GI tract. Now, if we actually scope an individual, which I do mm -hmm. in my field of GI, these people will have symptoms where I think they have a bad ulcer hmm. or they have something, you know, erosive gastritis and I'll go down with a scope and it's completely normal and we'll biopsy mm -hmm. them and they're normal. And it's actually due to what their nervous system and their brain is doing to their gut. Wow. And if we were to scrape all of the nerves off of the GI tract at the time of surgery, they would weigh four times as much as the entire spinal cord. Wow. And so what affects this can adversely affect this down here. Uh -huh. 
And I must uh, confess, it's kind of an interesting uh, a paradigm, but a number of years ago, before I got involved in the GI field, uh -huh. I had a patient come with severe abdominal pain. They had been scoped, they had seen a lot of other physicians, and one of my specialties is the difficult to diagnose patient. So mm -hmm. um, she came with this encyclopedia of things. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at all the different medicines she had tried that didn't work. And there was one of them that she had not tried called Pepsid, which is famotidine, it's an H2 blocker. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is very unlikely to help her, but she's never tried this. Let's put her on Pepsid. This was in the old fashioned days when you actually wrote your prescriptions ah. down. <laughs> and so I wrote the prescription and sent it to her. And she comes back a few weeks later and she says, Dr. Nedley, I have to give you a hug. My pain is gone. <laughs> wow. This, this was exactly what I needed. It is so great. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at her chart. I gave her Pepsid. Uh -huh. That shouldn't have helped her that much. I said, can I see your bottle? It was relatively simple treatment. Relatively simple yeah. treatment. And actually what her bottle said because of doctor's handwritings, and mm -hmm. this pharmacist didn't understand my handwriting that well, but the bottle said Paxil, 20 milligrams twice daily. Paxil is an antidepressant. Wow. And so we had helped her depression, uh -huh. which had helped her gut. And she thought I was a brilliant physician, but in reality, <laughs> I made a huge mistake. <laughs> or maybe the pharmacist did. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the pharmacist did. And wow. I was kind of horrified, uh -huh. but at the same time, grateful that um, the Lord can even sometimes work through our mistakes to wow. help people. <laughs> what a wonderful story. That's amazing. You know, it really is. It's not just what you eat, but it's also what you're thinking. And I think sometimes it can be tempting to separate the two and to think it's only about nutrition or it's only about mental health, but I think we've really learned that both of them combined are what bring overall comprehensive health. And Absolutely. So, thank you so much, Dr. Nedley, for being with us today. And up next, we're going to have Dr. Kununobu sharing a little bit more about nutrition. Hi there, I'm Dr. Kuninobu. There are many diets for losing weight, some of the most popular being the paleo and ketogenic low-carb diets. While people can lose some weight on these types of regimes, unfortunately, the loss is mainly water and protein. There is no real improvement in diseases like heart disease. In fact, these diets may actually make the disease worse. A whole food plant-based diet, on the other hand, improves not just weight, but helps prevent, stop, and even reverse lifestyle diseases like heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol. So why don't you try a plant-based diet today? We've learned how the choices that we make and what we eat and drink can affect us mentally and physically. But is it possible that our nutritional choices can impact our goal of complete health in mind, body, and soul? I believe it can, and so does Dean Cullinan. Let's hear more. Have you ever walked into your house and just found yourself lifted off your feet as your nose catches a whiff of freshly baked bread in the oven? There's nothing quite like it. Ever had that same experience walking into a butcher's or a fishmonger's? Probably not. It's almost as if we've been hardwired to like certain foods, whereas others have just been habit and tradition. If we go back in time to when man was first created, his diet was quite simple. And no, it wasn't because Adam and Eve hadn't yet figured out just how to roast beef, but rather these foods were unnecessary. For people that were likely perfect, likely far bigger than us, stronger than us, and faster than us, a plant-based diet was sufficient. And all the science today tells us that nothing has really changed in that regard. It's almost as if the ideal diet that God gave man and woman at the beginning of time is still the ideal diet that He gives to us today. The reality is that if you and I want to make significant and lasting changes to our bodies, we need to start with what we put into our bodies, the fuel. 
And just as you'd want to make sure that you're putting the right fuel into your car, so we ought to be putting things into our bodies that they were designed to work with. Otherwise, just like your vehicle, you're going to find yourself breaking down more times than not. And before you know it, you'll be in the human auto shop looking at some very pricey repairs. Thankfully, maintaining the machinery that God gave us is quite simple. Take a loaf of bread, for example. Sure, you can just add the whole kitchen sink to the ingredients list. Your sugars and your oils, your potassium bromates, your chlorines and your calcium peroxides. Honestly, the list goes on and on. Or you can just keep it simple. Flour, water, yeast, a little salt, pop it in the oven for a while and voila! You know, there's more religion in a good loaf of bread than many people think. Keep it simple, endure the heat, have a little patience, and before you know it, you'll find yourself growing far beyond what you ever thought was possible. Just as you were lifted off your feet as you smelt that freshly baked bread at home, so we hope you'll be lifted off your feet once again at the return of Jesus Christ, the bread of life. There's nothing like the first sign of spring, especially after a long and hard winter. Everything is dormant, the clouds are gray, and it looks as if winter's never gonna come to an end. But then there's that small hope that things are going to change. Maybe that's the warm air. Maybe it's the cherry blossoms, or maybe it's the small bees but it gives you hope. Do you ever feel like you're going through a season of winter in your life? Do you feel like your outlook is negative or maybe you're not doing well with your health? Maybe it's everything and you just want change. In today's program, we hope that you've not only discovered the importance of nutrition, but have also been given the tools necessary to make a change that will last. If you would like to know a little bit more about our New Start principles, we invite you to become a member of our New Start Online family. Our program features health presentations pre-recorded by our medical team, delicious and nutritious recipes from the New Start Kitchen, and the encouragement and resources needed to make a change that will last. All this and more is just a few clicks away, so use the promo code below to get started with your New Start Online journey. Until next time, I'm your host, Jonathan Hunter, reminding you that it's never too late to make a new start now. Well, new start gave me a chance to literally start over again. I've lost almost 20 pounds. I'm no longer taking any um, blood sugar medication. My diabetes is completely normal in this short program. And uh, the staff is phenomenal. And I just really enjoyed my time. I think it's definitely a worthwhile investment for your health and for your spiritual well-being. So we love you. If you have the opportunity, you will not regret coming to New Start. New Start has given me my life back. When I arrived here, I had a lot of pain it, uh, from polymyalgia rheumatica. It affects the joints and the muscles. With the diet and the hydrotherapy uh, and the acronym New Start with every day and my relationship with God, I have no pain. After 18 days, I am looking forward to my life, living forward. I, I know that I have to keep and continue on this path for my health and well-being. I managed to lose weight, which is not why I came, but I happened to me anyway, so I'm blessed. And I loved working with everyone here, the doctors take care, and all of the patients and people here are so lovely and kind. 
Everyone who takes good care of us are so lovely and kind. It's a beautiful place to come and feel better and to heal.